If you want to increase the strength of a normal map, you cannot just increase the contrast, because a normal map stores 3D vectors. In this video we will look at one easy way we can modify them, that also gives us a lot of artistic freedom. So in Blender let's press S to scale up the cube and let's make it so big that the camera is inside of it. Then I will click here to enter the camera view. I will open a shader editor and let's add an image texture node. Here we can load a file from our computer. Let's also place a texture coordinate node. And we can use the window coordinate system to sample the texture. Now we can switch to the material preview mode up here, so we can see what we are doing. To fix the aspect ratio let's go to the output tab and here we can enter the dimensions of the texture. In my case that's 2048 on both axes. Now to fix the strange colors let's set the color space to non-color. And let's also scroll to the bottom of the output tab and here we can set this ring to zero. And finally in the render tab also at the bottom let's disable the color management by setting the display device to none. Now we have loaded our normal map into Blender and if we would now render an image we would get back the same image that we loaded in. And we could save it here to a file. Now here we could edit the texture but first we have to understand what type of data we get here from this socket. In a normal map the amount of red, green and blue in a pixel is used to store the 3D coordinates of a vector x, y and z. And this vector is a direction in 3D space, which tells us in which direction the surface is pointing. Now here we get the color data, but the values are in the range 0 to 1. And we have to first convert it to a vector, which is in the range minus 1 to 1. To do this we use a vector math node and we first multiply the data by 2 and then we subtract 1. And at the end we have to convert it back to the range 0 to 1 to store it in an image again. So we have to do the opposite, we first add 1 and then we divide by 2. So if we now want to make changes to the vectors we can do this here in between. And this vector here is defined with three coordinates and we can place a separate xyz node to access them here. This vector is in the xyz format. But this format is not very easy to work with. In our case it's much better to use spherical coordinates. Instead of three coordinates we now only have two angles, theta and phi. Theta is the angle that controls how far the vector is rotated down, away from the z-axis. So here it would be 90 degrees. And the second angle, phi, defines the rotation around the z-axis and it goes 360 degrees around. So how can we calculate phi? Well, we only look at this ground plane here in 2D. Whenever we want to convert two coordinates into an angle, we can use the inverse tangent function. So in Blender let's place a math node and select arctan2, which has two inputs, and we plug in our y and x coordinate. Now to calculate theta, we can look at this rectangle here in 2D, and we can do the same as before. This length here is our x, and y is now the z coordinate. And I also now swapped the two coordinates because here phi goes counterclockwise and data now goes clockwise. In Blender we first need to get this length here. We can add a combine xyz node and we construct this small vector here with x, y and 0. So it's just a 2D vector. And then we use a vector math node and we can calculate the length of this vector. And then we can use the arctan2 function again using this length here and z. Now we have calculated theta and phi and we can change them here. For example we could display theta, scale it or invert it and we can do a lot of cool stuff here. But in our case we now want to convert theta and phi back into the xyz format so that we get a normal map back. How can we do this? We start with a vector that points straight up, so the coordinates are 0, 0, 1. In Blender we can place a combine XYZ node and set it to 0, 0, 1. 
and now we rotate this vector around the y-axis by theta. So let's place a vector rotate node around the y-axis, this vector by theta. And finally we rotate it again around the z-axis by phi. So we do the same thing again, but we want to rotate around z by phi. And here we have our x, y, z coordinates again for our normal map. Now to clean this up a bit, we can group all this. Here we convert the vector to spherical coordinates. And we can also group this. And here we convert spherical to a vector, the opposite. Alright, now we can easily convert between these two formats. In our case we are only interested in changing theta because the angle theta is basically the strength of the normal map. If theta is zero, the normal vector is pointing straight up and we get a perfectly flat normal map. But if we increase theta, the vectors will point stronger in a certain direction. So we could use a math node and multiply theta by some value, which allows us to control the strength of the normal map. But if we make it too strong, we get some problems. This is because theta is getting larger than 90 degrees. In Blender we could use a clamp node and we want to keep theta between 0 degrees and 90 degrees. But we have to enter radians. So 90 degrees in radians is pi times 0 0.5. So now this works great. But if we need a bit more control, we could use a float curves node instead. Let's set the maximum range also to 90 degrees, so pi times 0.5. And then we also have to zoom out. And now we can control the strength of the normal map with a curve. For example, we can make the weak parts of the normal map even weaker and we can make the strong parts even stronger. And at the end, if you want to save this to a file, we just render an image and here you can save it to a file. So a normal map would have RGB, 16-bit if you want more precision, and yeah. 